Hey, brothers, sisters. I am ready for the rapture. How about y'all? I wanted to tell people, so today I, I lost my phone. I mean, I didn't lose it. My phone died, and it would not come, uh, wouldn't boot up uh, yesterday. And, you know, now that I think about it, I lost, like, a lot of stuff because I had my calendar on my phone. And my calendar is where, you know, if I woke up at a particular time or God said something to me or if I... Um, had a dream, I would be putting it in my calendar, and now my calendar is gone, unless there's some way of figuring out how to, how to get that. I don't think I had it uploading to Google and stuff like that. I'm not that technically savvy. Anyway, uh, it was an opportunity today to go and witness to a girl named Rhonda, and um, when I got there to Best Buy, she said that I said, you know, here's my computer. Um, they, they put my SIM card into my new phone yesterday. I didn't even have people's phone numbers saved. I didn't even have my own mother's phone number saved. <laughs> Might be a good thing. Um, I emailed her to tell her I didn't have her phone number. Anyway, uh, but I went to Best Buy and I was like, okay, check out my computer. And I had had problems with my computer crashing a lot lately. And so I said, you know, I have a Christian YouTube channel. It's about Jesus. And she, she said, oh, really? How many subscribers do you have? I said, it doesn't really matter, but I've got 4,500 or something. And um, I said, you know, today's kind of an interesting day for me because it is six years, six months, and six. I said, have you ever heard of 666? And she said, yes. And... Um, I said, yeah, that's in the Bible. And I said, it's six years, six months, and six days since my first rapture dream, which was on March 16th of 2017. And she said, oh, I know about the rapture. I said, oh, you're a believer? And she said, no, but my best friend is, and she's always talking about the rapture. So I said, listen, uh, it's been six years, six months, and six days, and I do believe that Jesus is coming any day, and I really would like to talk to you. Your friend loves you. I love you. I really would like to talk to you um, before I leave here. Well, she didn't come back, but I had uh, I had the left behind letter that I've been giving out and other people have been giving out for me. I had the letter. I had a New Testament and two gospel tracts that I gave her. And I just said, your friend loves you and you really, really need to get saved or you will be left behind. And she's like, okay, thank you. But um, there was a man there who was collecting the trash. He was going to the different trash places around the Best Buy. And I talked I talked to him. I was like, hey, how you doing? And he's like, I'm doing great. How are you? I said, I'm just sitting here waiting for Jesus. He goes, yeah, Jesus is coming. I said, oh, you know Jesus is coming? He says, yes, Jesus is coming sooner than most people think. I was like, oh, wow, okay. And he just had, you know, he just had his light shining. He had his light shining. I gave him the letter. I said, you know, if you could pass this to somebody that you know who could, you know, maybe make copies of it and give it out. That we, There aren't any gospel tracts that I know of, or very few, that are about the rapture. And this is a gospel tract about how to get saved before the rapture. He's like, oh, okay, that sounds good. And um, anyway, it was just refreshing. But I think about, uh, it's just sad to me when I think about the things that I might have lost on that phone. It's such the calendar and stuff. So just going off in my mind, um, tomorrow, okay, September 23rd. Today's a 666 day kind of for me. Tomorrow, September 23rd, is going to be my my first of my, I have six, I have a one on the way, I have another baby on the way, so I have six grandchildren. This would be my third grandchild, which was a girl, and she was born on September 23rd, um, two years ago. She's going to be two, and I went to go see the grandson that was born on the 14th of September on September 23rd. And at that time, I had a big, long left-behind letter, like six pages that I'd written out for uh, my son. 
that was two years ago. Well, last weekend he came to the house and I showed him where the left behind letter was and everything else. I told him, you know, I've been loving, I've been loving people. I have relationships with people that I talk to over the phone. I love the people on my YouTube channel. I pray for them. I pray for anybody that comes to find my channel. And why wouldn't I love my own family to have received what God has given me these six years, six months, and six days, you know? I was like, you know, y'all didn't, y'all weren't interested in it, but I had to do it. I had to tell the message that Jesus is coming and how to get saved and how to be not a lukewarm Christian. So God gave me another, <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm having tickles in my throat. Could be fall allergies. God gave me another rapture dream. That is why I'm on this, and why I'm doing this video, okay? It was, I believe, on the morning of uh, the 20th. I'm not exactly sure what day it was. I wrote it in my calendar, but now my calendar is gone. Um, but I would think, I'm pretty sure it was the morning of the 20th. And see, on the 20th, that was my six-year anniversary of being healed of complex PTSD. I mean, I had had a lot of depression. Even that, even after getting born again, it was like all of these triggers because all of these people who aren't born again, they, you know, I had church abuse and elder abuse and all kinds of family abuse and stuff. It's just like, praise the Lord, September 20th of 2017, to God be the glory, he told me, you're healed. I was like, what? I'm healed? He's like, you're healed. He said, no more antidepressants, no more going to the psychiatrist. She was a Christian psychiatrist, so I had to go tell her that he, got, he healed me. She used to pray for me. Every time I came in, every three months, we would just sit there and talk about Jesus and um, her her she was very very much upfront with being a born again christian and uh, i said hey god healed me you know thank thank you for your prayers and i'm healed and so that was six years ago on the 20th so the morning of the 20th i had a rapture dream i was kind of surprised to be getting a rapture dream instead of just having the rapture happen but it was at the beginning my a, a white fire truck uh came up and pushed, I would, you would say hit, but it was tapped my husband. Okay. My husband was like, ah, and, um, and the firemen were yelling at him to get out, get out of the way, get out of the road. And then the next thing you know, an ambulance came up beside that as he was trying to get off the road and the ambulance hit him harder that knocked him down. And he was just in shock that he would be knocked down. Now, the thing is, it's, oh, it was two, it was a white fire truck and a white ambulance. And my husband is my husband of 41 years, even though, you know, he left in 2006, he divorced me in 2008 and he remarried in 2021, uh, 2012. And I'm keeping my vows because that's what the Bible says to do. And it's, it, the keeping my vows hasn't been hard. It's been hard to ignore all the voices that tell you that you're a liar, that you're wrong, that you're false. That's what's kind of hard sometimes because I know, I know that this is what the Bible says. And I know that I was given the command to persevere when I filed for divorce. I had the booming voice of God call me by name, Terry. I was like, yes, Lord. It was in the middle of the night. I flew out of the bed. I hit the floor. I was like, yes, Lord. I said, you're scaring me. He said, my sheep, no, my voice. And I said, yes, Lord. And so I said, am I, am I wrong to divorce? Because I had just filed a couple days before. And he said, persevere. So I dropped the divorce. I met my husband at the Christian counselor's office. I said, I'm not going to divorce you. And he's like, but I deserve you to divorce me. You know, I think a lot of these people push, push others into wanting you to be the bad guy to do the divorce. 
I think that's what he wanted. But I said, no, I'm not. You can, you can kill me. I don't care. I'm not going against God. You know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord, men depart from evil, iniquity. And uh, there was no way I was going to go against God. And so I dropped the divorce. Anyway, so that word persevere is very important to me. And if you were to ask me, like, you know, every day is a different verse that I like. But, um, you know, Revelation 3, 10, 11, because you've obeyed the command to persevere, I will keep you from the time of testing that will come upon the whole earth. Keep you from, take you up, <laughs> take you up to heaven in the rapture, caught up, violently seized, up, snatched away before the tribulation that's coming on the earth. And then he says, hold fast. Don't let anyone take away your crown. I'm coming soon. So that's Revelation 3, 10 and 11. So then in the dream, my husband really represents the worldly church. That my, my husband, I, I haven't seen him since 27, 2016, I think. 2016, I haven't seen him. Um, and I did not go. My son got married on October 21st of 2017. And my son and his wife, have begun, it's going to be six years this year. They did not have me at their wedding, but they had dad and the new wife at the wedding. And so... I paid the cost of following Christ, persevering in the faith, and, you know, it's, um, that's what I've done. Revelation 3.10, obey the command to persevere. I will keep you from the time of testing that's going to come upon the whole world. Well, last fall, my, my husband left, he heard my voicemail, which is now gone. I'm so glad that I actually have a recording of it on one of my videos, um, but my voicemail's gone. And it was, um, you know, talking about Jesus. I used my voicemail as an evangelist tool, but he heard the voicemail and then he was like, that's weird. That's a weird voicemail. Uh, but yeah, I'm going in the rapture, even though my voicemail did not say rapture. So he, you know, he believes he's going. And then this is the worldly church that needs to be pushed, pushed knocked down even in their sin, in their lukewarmness, in their idolatry of loving the world or loving their job or loving politics or loving sports or loving their family, loving their adultery, whatever it is that they love, um, they're going to be left behind. They need to be awakened. They need to be sanctified. They need to be purified. They need to be uh, in their wedding dress. And so on March 16th of 2017, that's when I had my first rapture dream. I was in a wedding dress and I was told, I was in a room full of people. I was looking at wedding gifts on tables and they said uh, that Jesus was coming to get me. And I was like, what? And that's what they said. I said, Jesus is coming to get me? And they said, yes. And then when I woke up, God told me I was going to start the YouTube channel. So that was six years six months and six days ago then uh the 20th was six years from when i had uh been healed of ptsd then of course a lot of people know about september 23rd of 2017 the revelation 12 sign and that morning i did have a rapture dream that morning and then the next day i had a dream where i'm once again a bride and then the next day i had a dream that i was in uh in a wedding dress so it's, you know, I've been blessed. I love these dreams. I thank God. I was kind of, I was surprised to be having this dream. Um, and then, you know, I'm high watch every single day. So today's the 22nd. Tomorrow, the 23rd, is not just my granddaughter's birthday, my anniversary of that, re of that rap Revelation 12 sign and the Revelation 12 sign rapture dream that I had. I was carrying up a baby girl in that dream. I arrived in heaven. I talked with a saint who was checking me in named Randy, and she told me where the baby girl was, and I got to see the sky. I, we were waiting on, a, on a, like a, a seashore, and I got to see half of the sky was a beautiful sunset. The other sky was completely black with all these stars, and I'm holding the baby girl and telling her, you know, we're about to go see Jesus. Um... 
And during the whole thing, I was like flying around telling people, repent, repent, this is the rapture. Because I still, even, I mean, aren't what, isn't that what we're doing right now? We are still sharing the gospel, trying to get people saved that are most likely going to be left behind. And then they would be tribulation saints. And God is going to be saving people during the tribulation, with tribu making tribulation saints. So anyway, um, that's the anniversary of that tomorrow. And it's also the anniversary uh, two years from when I went to go see my grandson for the first time. And um, get this. <laughs> I don't know what made me think of doing this, but I did a day calculation. It is 7,026 days tomorrow from the very first time God spoke to me. And, you know, when people don't believe that God speaks to people, I always point to that one because God woke me up at one o'clock in the morning and told me to go check my husband's phone. That's not in the Bible, but we do know that God hates adultery and he loves marriage. And I got up like a robot and went and found his phone and dialed the last number. And it was my best friend at church that said, hey, honey, how you doing? And I hung up the phone and I was, I was suicidal for nine months before I actually got born again myself and then repented of my own sins, right? We all have to repent of our own sins, which I did. And um, anyway, so it's like, you know, uh, in, uh, I, just, I still kind of floored that I just lost all of those dreams that I had written down in my calendar instead of writing them down in my journal. Anyway, maybe that just means we're about to leave. So it's 7,026 days from the time that God first spoke to me, June 28, 2004. That's like 726. You know, you take out the zero, you got 726, which is harpazo, which is caught up, caught up, caught up, <laughs> caught up. We're going up. We're going up to meet Jesus. We are not going to be here during the tribulation. And... You know, I get, I get, I get a lot of comments of people who disagree about divorce or marriage. When I, I'm not budging. I'm not budging. Divorce or marriage is always adultery as long as your first spouse is still alive. You have to repent. God will give you the grace to repent. God will give you the grace to leave your adulterous remarriage so that you can be right with him. And you're actually loving your children from the adultery the adulterous remarriage, just the same as if you had had children in fornication. When you turn from your sins and you turn to loving Jesus with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself, you're loving your children because you're showing them the example of what someone is like when they've repented and been born again. They flee from fornication. They flee from adultery. They don't stay in it. They don't stay in it. So, um, you know, the dream, so back to the dream that I just had, the fire truck, the ambulance, it's an emergency. It's an emergency that people do not realize that it's going to be really bad during the tribulation. And the next thing was a tornado at my front door. And in the dream, I'm saying, oh, just like in my October rapture dream, I thought, so October 24th last year, which was the anniversary, the second wedding anniversary of my daughter, whose two-year-old is going to be two um, tomorrow on the 23rd. It was um, their wedding day. I was not invited to their wedding either. That was three weddings that I was not invited to all three of my children's weddings. Okay. So... In the dream, I'm saying, oh, it's just like in my October rapture dream last year. Now, in the dream, I, of course, in the dream, I'm thinking it's really happening. That's how real these rapture dreams are. You think that it's happening. You think that it's really going on. It's not, a, it's not like watching it. It's that you're participating in the dream. So... There was a tornado at my front door again. Just like in the October 24th dream. So the, so the tornado is outside in the front, at the front yard, in front of my front door, out in the front yard. And I hit the floor. I'm down on the 
face down on the floor and I'm like, thank you, God. Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the rapture. Thank you, God. And then there is a light. Now it's not a beam going through the door or anything. There is a light beam and it's sort of like in a circle that is coming from under the door and then it's moving towards me along the hardwood floors and coming up towards me and then I'm like thank you this is the rapture and then the next thing you know I am outside and there are other people flying up with me and they are um, as we're flying up we're looking at the people who are not flying up we are looking at the people who are looking up, thinking, I mean, they're not screaming, they're not crying, they thought they were going. So they're like looking up and going, okay, what about me? When about when, when am I going? What about me? I mean, they knew that it was the rapture, but they weren't going. And then the strange thing is, is I flew up, for some reason, I went through a pink ceiling. I don't know why. Uh, a lot of times when I fly up in rapture dreams, it's like I'm, my hands go through the ceiling. I can see like my glorified body, my hands going through the ceiling as I'm flying up. But in this case, it was, I didn't see my, I didn't see myself glowing or anything. I didn't see, but I saw my head, <laughs> my head going up, the top of my head going up through the ceiling. I didn't fly all the way up to heaven. Um, I can't say I knew the people that were flying up with me. The people that were left behind, for some reason, I knew that I knew some of them and that they were being left behind. I, I can't say names. I don't remember specific names, but they were just like some people I may have known. Of course, you know, I know a lot of people on YouTube who think they're going in the rapture and they're not going because they're divorced or remarried. So, um, anyway, that was the dream. And I think also, if you just think about it, we're supposed to be watching every day. It, we don't know what day it is, but also, you know, September, October is not 10, it's 8, oct, I mean, everybody knows oct is, an octagon is eight-sided, right? Oct is eight. So, that would mean September is seven. You know, could it be a hidden 726, September 26, the rapture date? It could be. I just really think that, um, and the thing, if, if it was September 24th, a couple of days from now, um, that is 40 days from my birthday, November 3rd. And the fire truck that is at the fire station near me is fire truck number 63. And I'm 63 years old. So I'm hoping not to be here to be 64. And the strange thing, too, is if you look at the rapture can happen any day. Doesn't have to be on a Jewish feast day. Doesn't. If it were to happen when Israel was starting their Yom Kippur, which I think is on the night of the 24th, um, I think it's the night of the 24th through the 25th is when they're doing it, Sunday night. If the rapture were on a Sunday, right before Israel's Yom Kippur, then that would kind of wake them up as to, wow, we missed it again. We were looking for our Messiah, but the Messiah really was Jesus. And that then they could, you know, 40 days later, November 3rd to November 5th could be when the tribulation begins. And the reason why I say that is because if the rapture happens and then the seven-year tribulation begins with the peace deal signed by the Antichrist and then the second coming the second coming with Jesus coming with us down to earth we're in our glorified bodies we're on our horses Jesus is going to fight the battle of Armageddon all of that that happens at the end of the book of Revelation um, if he were to come down on Feast of Trumpets down on Feast of Trumpets Subtracting 2,520 days, which is the length of the seven-year tribulation, which is um, two periods of 1260 days, then that comes to November 3rd to November 5th, depending on what day you count Feast of Trumpets in 2030. And of course, nobody really knows what day Feast of Trumpets is uh, in 2030, 
But the moon at her feet, like Ty Green went and did 10 years of it, the moon at her feet, subtracting to 2,520 days, that comes to November 5th. So, November 3rd, November 5th. But there, you know, it does seem like there should be some kind of gap before the tribulation begins. I mean, it could happen immediately that they sign the treaty right after we leave. It's possible. We know they have everything planned and everything ready to go. But um, we just aren't here for the tribulation. And, you know, I still get people who are convinced I, I have somebody named Set Apart who came and said, oh, I'm so glad that you've got it right about divorce or marriage. That's a strange thing right there. I'm glad you got it right about divorce or marriage and that you all remarriage while the first spouse is still alive is adultery. I'm like, wow, that sounds like a friend. But then, but you have to learn about how we're going to go through the tribulation. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, uh-uh. Nope, I'm not going through the tribulation. I have... My heavenly home all prepared for me and I'm a wise virgin I'm not looking for um, how I'm gonna survive during that seven years I don't need to I don't need to because I'm gonna be I'm a bride I'm gonna be taken up 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 and away and um, you know where's the blessed hope <laughs> really where is the blessed hope so I think that there are going to be a lot of people that are very, very, very surprised that we're looking for the rapture. You know, uh, I've done videos about some of these people, but, you know, J.D. Farag, everybody loves J.D. Farag and his Bible prophecy updates and everything, but J.D. Farag preached on 1 Corinthians 7, 10, 11, and he doesn't take it as fact. It's a command from the Lord that says, a woman should not depart from her husband, but... And if she does, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. And a husband must not divorce his wife. There's no exception in there for remarriage, but all these pastors, including J.D. Farag, came up with all these reasons, and they always go back to Matthew chapter 19. And it's except for fornication. That's what it is. It's except for fornication. He says, let not... Uh, not let not man separate what God has joined together. God joins every marriage together between one man and one woman for one lifetime. But these pastors, you know, J.D. Farag, Jack Hibbs, um, I don't know what Amir Safadi, I don't I surely Amir Safadi has not actually preached that you could be divorced or married, but who knows. But they were in that Before the Wrath movie, which is a really good movie, explaining why the rapture is pre-trib. But they're wrong. Uh, you know, Jack Hibbs said you could be married five times or 50 times just to stay in the marriage you're in. That's what he counsels people. That's what his church is full of. And here, J.D. Farag did the same thing. And then you've got Jimmy Evans. He used to be a post-tribber. He came around to the truth of the pre-trib rapture. Tipping Point is his YouTube channel. He does all these videos. He speaks at um, Ed Young's church. is his church. He speaks. He says that 40% of Americans, of all unbelievers and believers, know that we are in the end times. 40%. And then he, at the beginning of his message, says, <laughs> uh, we're having a blended family conference again. He has a marriage ministry for 30-something years. Counseling people how to get rid of their soul ties. Because he's involved with uh, Tony... Oh, goodness. What's that guy's name? Tony Evans. Kingdom kingdom marriages. How to get rid of your soul ties from your first marriage. It's not biblical. It's ungodly. And they they all they all do this stuff together. They're making money off of these prophecy conferences all together. And they're not going in the rapture because they teach people how to be divorced and remarried. They're, they're going completely against Hebrews 13, 4, which says, Let the ma marriage bed be undefiled, that God will surely judge fornicators and adulterers. And I'm just really grateful that I was led by the Lord to the knowledge of the truth the saving knowledge of the truth and that I didn't listen to pastors, elders, my parents, uh, counselors, all of these people 
all of these people. You know, before I got healed of PTSD, I went to uh, Steve Arterburn's. Um, it was a retreat. It was a weekend retreat. And I didn't know at the time that Steve Arterburn's in his third marriage. You know, I was like, oh, my goodness. It's like all these people in ministry are way, way far, way, way far from the truth. And they've made money. They've sold books. Um, you know, uh, what's his name? Who has the book After the Rapture? David Jeremiah. Great on pre-trip rapture. Has a book called After the Rapture. Wrong on divorce and remarriage. Um, J.D. Farag. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Evans. Jack Hibbs. Pretty much. Uh, Greg Laurie. Um, there's just so many of them. There are so many of them. And why is that? Because they wanted big ministries. They wanted they wanted a following, an international following. They wanted fame and fortune, you would say. And they've lied to people. And so, you know, they need to be run over by a white fire truck and a white ambulance and wake them up. They've got blood on their hands and they're going to be left behind. And so, um, it's really sad. It really is. But I'm just going to keep on sounding the alarm and hoping hoping for a September rapture. I think we've only got, what, seven more days? Seven, eight, eight more days. Um, if we get to October, we get to October. I'm going to keep looking in October, too. You know, nobody is going to steal my joy. That was the thing about talking with this guy at the Best Buy, the trash collector, he had joy. He had joy. It was like as soon as we started talking about, you know, Jesus coming, he just lit up. He lit up. And, uh, you know, it was like we were brother and sister. And, um, and I gave him the left behind letter and asked him if he would pass it on to some people that he knew they were also looking for a rapture that they could make it, make copies of it and give it to people. It's not really about getting people to come to my channel. It's about having them be soundly saved to be sure that they're saved and we can't be lukewarm we can't be making excuses for sin you know Acts chapter 5 you know I, I wonder what once saved always saved people think about this because Acts chapter 5 I've heard some pastors say it you know Ananias and Sapphira were struck dead for one lie one lie <laughs> and they were in the church they were believers in the church who had schemed about um, putting, you know, keeping some money for themselves when they had promised they wouldn't. They lied. And Revelation 21 8 confirms it that all liars go to the lake of fire when you willingly and knowingly deceive people. And I just don't see how these pastors, they have to know that they're lying to people. They're preaching the verse, they're preaching verse by verse, line by line. They're going through second. Peter chapter 2, they're reading 1 Corinthians, they're reading Romans 7, 1 through 3, and Luke 16, I mean, they all talk about Luke 16 because it talks about um, not loving money, and then it says, you know, uh, if you do, that it's an abomination in the sight of God to divorce and remarry is adultery, Luke 16, 18, and then Mark chapter 10, 2, 1 through 12, there is no exception clause in there. So they're lying on purpose. And Jimmy Evans is really bad because he did the wedding ceremony for Joni Lamb, a widow, to get married to a divorced man who left his wife of 30 years. God is not going to be mocked. And it's really sad. And the fact that um, you can see why young people have no interest in becoming Christians because they look at... They look at Christians as being the biggest hypocrites in the world, and they are the biggest hypocrites in the world. It's really ridiculous. Anyway, um, I'm just hoping, and the thing about Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira were struck dead in the church as believers, and they did not go to heaven. They weren't once saved, always saved, going to heaven. No, God struck them dead, and they went to hell. And it was to scare the whole church to fear God and to obey him. So, um, love y'all.
<laughs> uh, the rapture dream was exciting to me and every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before every day with Jesus I love him more and more Jesus saves and keeps me and he's the one I'm living for every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before you know there's a guy who's doing um shorts where he's going around and giving out money to people in the mall and in walmart and stuff like that and uh he asks like bible trivia questions and stuff and most of the most of the answers i know uh i've been studying the bible for 18 years but the, <laughs> there was a lady that he said i'll give you a thousand dollars if you can name all 27 books of the new testament and she got them all right. And then he gave her, she gave back $200. But I'm not so sure I could just go naming off all the 27 books of the New Testament. I don't know if I could do that. But anyway, he goes and, do, and he's doing really good things. But he goes and says, um, do you know, have you heard about the second coming? Jesus is coming to judge the earth. And then he's like, you know, talking with these people about the second coming. I think his name, oh, I think his name is Zachary. I'm not sure. But, you know, well-meaning and obviously giving out a lot of money. He gives out like $50 bills and $1,000 and stuff like that. So people are donating to his ministry. But if you do watch him, please, please tell him there is a big difference between, I'm putting in comments myself, but there, it's not the second coming that's coming next. It's the rapture that's coming next. It is the Harpazo caught up. 726 in Strong's Concordance, which is what my computer is sitting on my actual book of Strong's Concordance, which I'm glad I got a physical copy. You never know when all of these electronics are not going to be any good. Um, but yeah, he, he, it's like he's doing a good thing, but he doesn't know the difference between the rapture and the second coming. Rapture, we go up. The bride of Christ, those who are born again, we go up to meet Jesus in the air. We are transformed into our glorified bodies. And then after seven years, then Jesus comes back down to earth, which I believe is going to be on Feast of Trumpets. And if it's Feast of Trumpets 2030, then it would have to be sometime between November 3rd to November 5th that the tribulation would begin. The rapture has to happen before that. And then we come back down with them. We are forever with the Lord in our glorified bodies. And the tribulation saints will be coming back. So there isn't there isn't um, the bride of Christ is just not going just not going through the tribulation. And I'm just so glad that God gave me that very first dream with me being not a rapture dream, but being in a wedding dress and being told that Jesus is coming to get me because nothing is going to change my mind. That I'm a bride of Christ and I'm going up. And another uh, verse I like, you know, he, he goes around and he says, you know, uh, call somebody and ask them to give you a verse. And uh, a lot of people quote Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will make your paths straight. And I thank God that is a very, very good passage. And that's the way he keeps us straight and on the narrow path. When we don't lean on our understanding, we just acknowledge him. We talk to other people. We try to get people saved, even if we're just getting them saved to be tribulation saints. Um, and, of course, a lot of people quote uh, Psalm 23. You know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil that. It's a very, very popular one. But one that I was thinking of today is that the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth. And it's a globe. <laughs> in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully devoted to him. Because I witnessed to uh, a Hindu man also at the Best Buy today, and um, his screensaver was the earth with its curve. And I said, you know, Christians, Christians, he goes, oh yeah, I know a lot of Christians, but I'm a Hindu. And... Um, yeah, but I said, you know, a lot of people think that Christians think the earth is a, is flat. It's not flat. It's a globe. And, um, you know, I have friends that are on the 
bottom half of the globe. And if you think about it, what there aren't there Christians in Australia? That's below the, that's in the southern hemisphere. They're entering. We're about to have. Oh gosh, I guess today is the first day of fall, right? And they're having their first day of spring. Funny how that works. Opposite hemispheres, opposite seasons. And then, um, yeah, we'll just see. We'll just see what day he comes. You know, October 14th is when the solar eclipse, that's the ring solar eclipse, the annular solar eclipse, it's a ring, goes through Texas. And um, what do we do? We just keep watching. <laughs> we just keep watching. And, you know, a solar eclipse is also proof of a globe Earth, folks. It just is. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have had full moon rapture dreams. I've had a full moon rapture dream. That is September 29th. Full moon. You know, could it happen on the... Is, it could happen any day. It could happen any day. Any day, any hour. Wise virgins. We keep watch. And my friend uh, who left 32 years of remarriage adultery herself, her name is Suzanne, she was mentioning I had had the house finch that somehow spent the night in my house that turned out to be blind in its left eye. And then about, I guess about four days ago, I had a hawk come and land on the fence there. And the hawk was also blind in the left eye. <laughs> it's pretty weird. And she said, it's kind of like the parable of the 10 virgins, the five wise who have eyes to see, and then the five foolish who are blind. And we've got to, we have to keep praying. We have to keep filled with the Spirit. Keep filled with the Spirit. Whether anybody listens to us or not. So anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, maybe the next time it won't be a rapture dream. It will be the real thing. <laughs> I hope so. All right. God bless y'all and Maranatha.